Hello friends, today's video is a little bit different format than usually. It is interview. I was a guest on the Mayank show. It is podcast actually and yeah, he's an iOS developer as well from India. He's YouTuber, podcaster of course and we discussed for quite a long time about iOS development, career choices, freelancing, time management, you name it, <laughs> all the related stuff. He cut all that long discussion in one hour show and kindly sent this video version for this show over to me. And of course, I will link to the podcast as well. Of course, podcast interviews are better to just listen on audio. Yeah, but if you will decide to stay here, there are timestamps and let me know in comments did you manage it to watch that all and which part was most boring from all of that <laughs> okay welcome to the show uh, hello hello much nice to be here like evers i know your adventurous journey but i think my audience doesn't know about your journey so far so would you please like to tell us and take us through your journey from starting from your 20s and what you are doing right now Oh, okay, I will try to keep that short, but I already managed to do quite a lot <laughs> since <laughs> 20s. So in my 20s, I spent a little bit of time working as carpenter. Uh -huh. Then I got to the army and spent one and a half year in the army. And after army, I was policeman. And basically, I spent my 20s, most of my 20s in army and police. And then in one moment, I, I was, I had computers around me all the time, but I never was, I don't know, really serious in programming or something like that. Mostly gaming and so on. And, but by the end of my 20s, I started to rethink that I could like to get in IT and I started to study okay. computer science in university. And in after first two or three years, I do not remember correctly, but at the very end of my 20s, okay. I got my first job in IT. I started, I started working as IT engineer in a company related to payment systems. We installed uh, payment devices in shops and also there was some server side uh, payment systems and configuration for bigger outlets and so on. Yeah, I spent some time working in engineering roles. Then I become interested in more in product management and I become product manager. And then I recognized that I would like to go back to the programming. I learned on my own uh, iOS development, started freelancing on the side uh, in parallel to my uh, product management job. And yeah, in one moment I switched to full-time freelance iOS development and that is what I am doing now. So finally you are a freelance uh, iOS developer, right? Yes, yes, I am building. So there is one question that comes to mind after listening to whatever you have told us about your story. Like you have made a, you know, you have made multiple switches in your career. So uh, what is that one thing that you have left to do now? Because <laughs> we can see simply that you have you have changed in between so many careers. So uh, what what next are you planning to do? I don't know. We will see. <laughs> As you may see, those uh, careers are quite different. Right. Policeman, bartender, programmer, right. product manager. That's very different roles. We'll see what comes next. Okay. Currently, I am interested to keep this uh, programming uh -huh. as my main focus because I like build mm -hmm. things. And programming is what provides tools for me to work with other uh, mm -hmm. companies and work remotely. That was my main uh, focus, why I switched to right. freelancing, to be able to work remotely. And yeah, also to build my own applications. And so you are an indie developer so as well, right? We'll see. Yes, I have my own applications okay. in the App Store as well. But still the question remains the same, like... I just asked you about uh, what career is left to, you know, explore. 
you know generally what is expected out of a person who is around in his 20s is you can take maximum risk when you are in your 20s right that is what suggested to people when they are in their 20s but uh if we take your case you yeah. have been doing this thing for last like 25 years i can say right so what is that one thing that you you know take yes. in consideration before switching your careers because it is quite uh, you know big step to do so i i i completely you know can say that uh, people must be judging you when you make such decisions so what makes your back strong when you take such decisions can you please just share that with us i see that there is uh, let's say uh there are so many possibilities to mm-hmm. earn money and i do not see reason to stick to the one job or one profession if you see that you already kind of bored to do this work you are looking for something else right. that doesn't mean that i don't know you are running out of money and uh, you are not able to feed your family or pay your bills you can switch careers you can do whatever of course you can you have to keep in mind your mind in my you have to keep in mind your right. responsibilities think about family and so on people so what are, are those two points would you recommend that you must keep in consideration before switching a career like if if we take for an instance you were a pro- product manager at one point of time right then you switched to ios around 2014 yes. if i'm not if i'm not wrong uh 2016 yeah All right, 2000, 2016. In 2016, I uh, started freelancing full t- uh, full mm-hmm. time. Before it was just part time. So before time. you know resigning from your current job, like before resigning from that product manager job, what things did you make sure before starting your freelancing career? Like there must be some you know kind of points that you took into consideration before going on to moving to that job yeah right? sure sure shameless plug i have a full video about that on my on my youtube channel yeah uh, our audience is... can definitely check your vlogs and that amazing youtube channel that you have but yeah, yeah. there is a quite a long video about that but short version is that you should be sure that you are ready to jump from your current job i didn't just uh, uh, left my job and decided i will try to be freelancer i started do i started to do freelancing on the side and at the one moment i was in position then i should decide what mm-hmm. i will do next i will continue to work on my freelancing or i will continue to work in my day to day job because i already was too busy and i started to reject freelance jobs and i i had uh, incoming projects and i have to decide will i go with freelancing or okay. i will stay with my office job and basically i was uh, quite fast uh, almost immediately back on my uh, salary level what i had in my management role i was so that's a big point i i believe because uh, yeah. when it comes to switching between the careers that usually happens that you are getting less paid if, uh, than your current job when you switch your career itself right so yeah, sure. i i believe that's a major point that you can take under consideration that you was you were lucky enough to get almost same salary when you switched your job yeah. there is uh, such a saying hit the ground running uh, you i didn't start it somehow very slow and on and on low numbers of course i did that as everyone do on freelancing first projects are small right. you do not hire big numbers and so on but I did that on evenings on weekends while I still had my day job and then I when I saw that I am ready I just switched those jobs and from for some time I was on the same salary level but quite fast it was started to grow and so I I am in better position now and yeah if I will switch jobs uh, next time I will do the same <laughs> that I believe that you will <laughs> Basically currently so, I am I am building my own apps and I am looking uh-huh. forward to build the uh, percentage of revenue from my own apps and decrease uh-huh. percentage of revenue from freelancing job and I'm trying to do that. So since we are slowly. using this word freelancing again and again in our conversation so yeah. I would like you to uh, please give a brief intro about what is freelancing to our audience who is listening to this podcast right now. 
Freelancing nowadays is a very tricky term because you can work in different roles as freelancer. I was working on small projects, which is, which are, I don't know, a few weeks mm -hmm. uh, just to do some small job that can be hourly rate, that can be uh, project-based rate. And I started on freelancer.com mm -hmm. and Upwork. And after that, I moved, I had different plans, but quite fast, I moved to direct contracts. And currently, I am working with a client, which is ongoing customer. And actually, we have a relatively big development team on, on that project. So basically, I'm working. It's quite similar if you are working right. like a developer in the team. But I'm contractor. We have contract and we agreed how much hours I will work, how much it I will be paid and I'm doing what, okay. uh, whatever is in the pipeline. So answering your question, freelancing is very wide term. In my case, currently, that is long term project. Like many people confuse it with uh, contract jobs. Many people confuse it initially with remote jobs because like I was the one who was confused very initially with what are remote jobs and versus what are freelance jobs. Mm -hmm. So how can you just sort that in one line? Remote jobs and freelance jobs, those have absolutely different meanings. Uh, you right. can work remotely as as a regular employee, but also mm -hmm. as contractor, you may have a contract when you go to the company office, use company hardware and working in, in like like any employee in any company but right. difference is usually in uh, contract uh, type mm -hmm. you have some limited time contracts and usually freelancers don't have all those benefits uh, whatever you can name in uh, benefits working in company but on the pro side <laughs> consultants usually are better paid than uh, regular okay. employees bigger bigger okay. salaries so what a tip do you have for the for those who are newbies to freelancing or who want to you know start off with freelancing what tips would you give to those people or those uh, young kids who are coming out of college or maybe coming out of school who want to take a risk but uh, just you know stepping aside just because they don't have the roadmap to get into that field uh, I, I will suggest to First, uh, for everyone to get a job in the company, because when you are in the company, you have senior developers around you, you are learning way mm -hmm. much faster, and I highly do not recommend for uh, young guys just out from the uh, college to jump in the, into the freelancing. Because okay. in freelance, you also should care about uh, many other things as well, not only development. You mm -hmm. have to manage your customers, you have to find projects that everything is time consuming right. and if you just starting and programming already is challenging for you then all those things will together will be quite hard and uh, better to uh, learn how to program learn all those skills in working in company in day job then you have some kind of uh, security or at least feeling <laughs> of security but much more but i think is, i would express on feeling of security uh, only. <laughs> se <senior. laughs> yeah, but but most important most important working in company is that you have around uh, other developers who will guide you and will teach you and you can learn kind of for free right. because you are sitting in company you are getting salary and you are basically learning in consulting, in freelancing, when you're working as freelancer, everyone is expecting that you are coming right and solving on problems and solving problems fast. And no one, yeah, and no, no one would like to pay for that, that you are spending time to okay. learn some things or find some information and so on. That's, let's say, for a little bit more senior level developers, maybe freelancing. So say yeah. I have some experience in iOS development, say I have worked uh, suppose one year in a in a company full time as an iOS developer. Now, if I want to switch into the freelancing world, what all things that I need to do to get into that field? Uh, for person who already working and have um, little bit of experience, mm -hmm. I would uh, suggest to start freelancing on the side mm -hmm. uh, to the day job. So, always, how would he get that starts. first opportunity? Like, would that be his network, the local network that he has? Would that be any particular site? 
and if there is any particular site then how he can stand out out of all those you know thousands and lakhs of people who are giving their deal to the clients right yeah first job first job always is hardest one to get first customer first client it is always hardest one of course you can use those online job mm-hmm. platforms upwork and so on those are quite popular and there are plenty of uh, uh, plenty of job on those platforms there are good projects and there are bad projects you can be lucky okay. or unlucky with your project those are definitely are uh, worth trying you can give a try for those online job platforms but uh, also I am recommending to start mm-hmm. immediately to tell everyone that you are freelancing. Sure, uh, share that on social networking, share that with your <laughs> friends, your brother, mother, friend and so on. And try to find maybe some customer around you, some um, okay. some uh, local businesses maybe. Maybe you can offer something to your local business, uh-huh. maybe I don't know, some coffee shop next to you would like to have a mobile app or web page whatever and uh, yeah usually first projects you are not doing mm-hmm. for money do not care so much how much money you money you will earn but you are learning again you are learning to work with customer right. directly manage projects manage customer expectations and so on and you are building your portfolio and what is very important doesn't matter how much uh, you are getting money on that right. project. You have to make that project look to the thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars, whatever. If you are charging hundred dollars, you have to make that project look for the thousand, and you can. And after that, you will be able to attract mm-hmm. customer which is ready to pay thousand dollars. Because if you will make crappy up for I don't know hundred dollars and will go to show <laughs> to other customers, you will be able to attract only. Uh, sorry, but crappy customers yeah, who are ready right. to pay low money for whatever what works. You need good. You need good portfolio. So mm-hmm. therefore, it is very important on first projects. Do not concentrate on that uh, money. How much you will get, and after that, yeah, you, well, when you will have already good portfolio, some customer feedback, and so on, some show, you will be able to show other customers. So does that first project uh, success gives you the opportunity to get the second one as well, or is it like the fight again yes. from the scratch? That that is way more easy. Uh, I can say for uh, looking from my example, I can say about Upwork. On Upwork, okay. I started first jobs were very hard. I joined Upwork. I don't remember correctly, maybe 2015, something like that, okay. some time ago. But first projects was absolutely crappy projects. I uh, I had uh, five or ten. Uh, dollars project actually doesn't matter. That money right. doesn't matter right. to, to every, anyone. That was some uh, bug fix pro- bug fix project or testing project. I do not remember even, but that was very crappy. But I already <laughs> had something. You in, did in that my, just because you want to Upwork. gain some experience or want to show some. You know, you know, you want to make your profile. I yes, you have to get your at least something, some some kind of customer on on the Upwork and get that five uh, star review on the mm-hmm. project and good feedback. And then I developed it up. That was twenty hour, okay. twenty dollars per hour. And uh, but I developed that up in twelve hours. I promised it to that customer. I said, "Oh, the, I, will, I saw the project. I wrote proposal. I said that that will be fast up. That will be cost to you from hundred to two hundred dollars. That will be easy and fast project." Customer said, "Okay." I built that okay. up in about 10 or 12 hours and customer was very happy. He even gave me a tip. And again, that was hundred, uh, one, one and a half hundred dollars, something like that. Very, very small, very cheap project. And I, I, what I believe from the outer perspective that you don't need to be over promising when it comes to uh, tell your client that what you can do. You need to be under promising. Then if you perform over, uh, if you perform better than what you committed, then it would eventually help you, right? Always, yeah. Always. That is very, 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 very good point. You have to under-promise and uh, over-deliver and always. Yeah. Do not uh, promise something that you are not sure that you will be able to do. And if you promise it something, then do that on the best level. Because, yeah, basically, if you are freelancing, your um, 
you have to you have to have good okay. reputation and without reputation you you you, <laughs> you have nothing <laughs> yeah and yeah and that's 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 basically how you can start and i am always trying to say to everyone that you have to be present on social networks and so on Basically, in one moment, you will be in situation when you have projects coming in and you are just declining because you already have full time, full time. So that's how social media can help you to get uh, the clients more. or you can see the projects, right? Yes, yes. Social media helps, uh, good portfolio helps, good feedback from customers Good helps, por- portfolio in, in the sense that you're talking about Upwork specifically, right? No, yes, up, Upwork, but... Uh, any other freelancing uh, job or something like that because when you uh, if you contact customer first you have to prove somehow that you can right. do that work what you are you have to make to them do. believe you can say yes you and uh, what is it, what what i am recommending to write in portfolios not something your uh, how much schools you finished how much programming <laughs> languages you know and so on because for Many of customers, if especially if we are looking on small businesses, they are business owners who are who you connecting, and they okay. do not understand the terminology at all. But if you can show that, well, you are looking for, for example, social network application or some kind of food delivery application. Here is project. It looks about like you are looking for to make. I did that project. It took so much hours. It costs for customer about that. If you need something similar, I have to. I, I can to do that for you. And then customer understand what you so can do. What do you mean to I'm... say by that is like uh, what I got out of it is uh, uh, that you just say what he wants to hear from you. Don't crap about anything else, right? Uh, of course, you are saying what he wants you to uh, say, right? He wants to hear from you. Yes. Yeah. Customers, customer like to hear from you that you can do what customer is looking for. If customer is looking to build someone to build mobile application for uh-huh. food delivery, he will be happy to work with you. If you will be able to say that I did similar project, here this project is, here is customer feedback about that project i can build right. like that for you then customer will be happy if you if you will start uh, your proposal with writing how uh, how what, what kind of computer degree you have how many languages you know <laughs> and so on it would simply will be not very interesting <laughs> it would simply for say customer. that uh, what would i do with this i need to i mean if you have a project yes. yeah yeah but you are yeah, but you you are you are laughing, and I, I agree that is uh, funny to see to expect that someone <laughs> will write some technical things in such kind of proposal. But I really saw that on Instagram, okay. one guy sent me DM, and he he wrote uh, he sent this his proposal to me and said and said I do not understand why customers <laughs> don't like to work with me, and I actually I made. Uh, it was about two years ago already or even more i okay. made uh, igtv video and recorded my answer and described it basically the same there's no reasons to write to the customer that you know right. c c plus uh, plus whatever uh, if customer is, is writing that he like to develop uh-huh. a web shop for example right customer right. do not care about that and, and do not uh, understand you suppose if i get now we are going as a journey suppose i am the one who is asking you all the questions and i am the one who wants to start my journey in uh, freelance world right so you told me about how to start off you told me about how to get your first client how to make him happy with your project with the project that you are making for him now if i want to network and if i want to create my network in the sense that uh, i should be connected with people who are who are like minded like who are also working in the freelance world so how could I do that with the help of social media? Well, uh, of course, uh, you can try to reach people locally where do, if you are living in big cities and so on. Yeah, currently everything is in lockdown, but when that will be finished, I still highly recommend meeting groups mm-hmm. of developers. Mm-hmm. Go to meet other developers, make contacts and uh, get friends in industry. Uh, if you are living in the middle of nowhere like I do, for example, then <laughs> put your work out in social networks. Uh, social networks is um, social network can be whatever works for you. I am very active on Instagram. Lately, I am active on YouTube and also on Twitter. But 
usually Twitter is where most of developers are. And yeah, just I, I'm suggesting just to start mm-hmm. with sharing your work and find people who are working in the same area and start to connect with them and make contacts and just answer. So basically, I need tweets. to other person need to show his work out there on be it on Twitter, be it on Instagram or be it on yeah. YouTube. Okay. Yeah, if you will show if you will show your work and talk about problems and wins what you have in your work, mm-hmm. you will attract like-minded people who are working right. in the same area and right. you will make connections. Uh, also, you may be lucky and find some clients mm-hmm. across that as well. Mm-hmm. Because on Instagram, for example, there are plenty of different peoples uh, in, in all the world and so on. On, on, Inst- on Twitter... I don't know. It will be harder to find. I, I find Twitter quite uh, difficult yes. to, you know, propagate there because there is a community, a coding community, which is which is a very strong community out there. But uh, I find it quite difficult to, you know, uh, you can say promote my things over there. Uh, so can you please suggest any Twitter strategy that you can recommend if you have any? <laughs> I don't have any, frankly. I right. am not very active on Twitter, but I am... Um, I am trying to follow uh, also developers in I'm not let's say so I'm not looking for contracts uh-huh. or extra job on on Twitter I'm looking for meeting other developers and basically I'm follower other developers on Twitter and uh, sharing my work and I, I I see some likes or some answers and then I'm looking to that profile and also sometimes follow sometimes no and yeah, basically that's what I'm doing on Twitter. Nothing, nothing interesting. And, uh, Instagram, <laughs> and you're YouTube, quite popular on shopping. Instagram. If we come to Instagram, you are quite popular out there. Like you have almost forty five thousand plus uh, followers there, right? Yeah. So what worked for you on Instagram? I started Instagram um, a bit more than two years ago. I just wanted to share my work and uh, in, mm-hmm. wanted to. Uh, I, I guessed that I maybe will find some customers through that and actually yeah that happened I got some connections here and what I did basically I was active on Instagram I just posted almost I don't know I, I posted almost every day I have okay. let me check I, I have 816 posts on Instagram and I am here a little bit more than two years so that's 816 posts and you have been there for two years so yeah more than two uh, maybe two and a half but I I posted quite actively I, I will say that I'm posting almost every day mm-hmm. I am sharing my work and strategies I don't know I try different not say strategies but just posting uh, styles i wrote uh, quite long posts uh, uh, and mm-hmm. different it's almost almost like blogging in <laughs> instagram on beginning because i was thinking about starting blog but writing was just a little bit uh-huh. too boring for me and i wrote really long captions and i think that that maybe catch some attention for sure i use it uh, tags and i on beginning also i was going through the tags and looking what other people are doing okay. in the same area. So you did some research, so research on. on the audience that and you were targeting. Yeah. You just checked. Basically I just basically I just communicated with other people on I, I commented on other posts. I I, I, I communicated, I follow it, I I, 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 I like it, other um, developers posts and so on. But I wouldn't say I did that to grow Instagram. I did that just because, I, again, I'm sitting in the middle of nowhere. Right. I'm living in Latvia, that's North Europe, and there are not so many iOS developers around. Mm-hmm. I just was looking for contact and wanted to share my work. And uh, somehow, yeah, it's it, <laughs> it become 46,000 yeah, yeah, I just checked, I think yesterday or today, it was around 45 plus, I, I can remember that, not exact figures, but yes. Yeah. And on YouTube also, you have almost uh, more than 9,000 plus subscribers, right? So for YouTube, yes. uh, would you say the same thing uh, that you suggested for the Instagram? Uh, for YouTube, I just started. I am getting very, uh, I am getting, I'm getting quite a lot uh, questions on Instagram and I'm, 
trying to share how many it is possible. And if I see that quite often, I have asked uh, the same right. questions all the time. For a few of them, I have just saved the answer, just to copy paste and answer it. But for bigger uh, questions, for example, how to start development, and that is quite a right. big topic. For questions like that, I am recording a YouTube video, <laughs> publish it, and after that, I just send back link to the video and say, watch it now. <laughs> so take a look on this video, how to start freelance, yeah, how to start freelancing, how to become okay. programmer, and so on. And yeah, I, 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 I will say that my YouTube is big, but growing in last year was in 2020, it was okay. quite big, quite fast, I will say. I started So what do you think the reason behind that? Thousand uh, have you observed any specific reason? Year, I just was active. I just was active and I posted uh, videos answering those questions about freelancing development and so on. And right. I did some... Uh, few videos about my uh, setup, about my desktop, what kind of monitors I'm using and so on. Mm -hmm. And one of those videos I would say was quite viral for my channel that, okay. that got about 300,000 views, one oh of the God, videos with you. my setup. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. For Usually a programmer, have, it's a big I thing, I think, because we generally get 1,000, 2,000 views only, right? Yes, yes. Usually my videos are, I don't know, from thousand to maybe three yeah. thousands. And that one uh, got 300,000 views. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is. <laughs> like for programmers, it is obviously crazy. But that was video about uh, yeah. setup, about development setup and not about... So you would suggest that don't make only programming videos, also make things around that as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically my video is, uh, my YouTube channel is quite of a mess. If, if you are looking <laughs> from, if you are asking what, what, what good strategies are, are you using? I am using all the bad strategies <laughs> on my YouTube channel. But eventually they are proving YouTube to be channel, good strategies at, by the end of the day, right? Maybe, or if I would uh, do that in the right way, maybe that following account could be bigger, but. I don't know, uh, because usually you have to go in some specific niche. Everyone is saying if you like to be, if you like to grow on YouTube. But you I think have you have defined your niche, niche in three parts. There. Like I have seen your YouTube channel, it's uh, vlogs, it's uh, productivity hacks, and it's about iOS, right? These three things are majorly there. So I yes. think you have subcategorized your niche yes. as well. So... I think there is no uh, issue with the niche that you have on your channel. Yeah, maybe, maybe. There are some hardware uh, related, uh, some, let's say, touch videos and some are productivity or programming videos, but yeah, somehow it works. So okay. that growing is, let's say, above average what you can see on YouTube. Because usually to get into mm -hmm. the, that amount of subscribers, you have to publish more videos. I have not so many. I right. have less than 60 videos. So it's more of a consistency game as well. Yes, YouTube regular, definitely is consistency and long title game. For example, that my video, which was kind of viral on beginning it was Fair like okay. all the videos yeah it was just normal video views and in one moment it was <laughs> skyrocketing <laughs> <laughs> and i i usually i got i don't know maybe thousand views in a day or mm -hmm. even less and then i am opening statistics and i see 15 14 thousand views in a day <laughs> and i do not understand what's happened so yeah that one video goes viral and that is it okay that is it. so uh we just talked about instagram talked about youtube you are doing this freelancing job but how do you manage to do all those things in a single day like what is your time management game Time management game, let's say so, I am trying to uh, structure my day and do all the things in some kind mm -hmm. of buckets. I know that 
way more productive could be if I, for example, uh, do all the Instagram shots in one day and then post those okay. during the okay, week. Okay, but okay. I do not do that. <laughs> but that could be, but that could be right. even more productive. But I try to batch all the other things. For example, when I am going to the Instagram, I am opening Instagram, I am posting my photo, I am looking in last day comments, answering on DMs, answering, and I am not sitting all the day long and do not opening this, I don't know, time to time. I just kind of scheduling time for that. The same for email, I have for different uh, companies, different company emails, my personal email and so on. Again, I am planning time, I opening that. Uh, reading all the emails, answering what is needed, deleting what is not needed, and kind of watching that. And I'm planning my days in mm-hmm. such, such kind of uh, time boxes as well. So I'm does your planning, previous jobs help example, you to plan out your example, day? Like you just said that you plan out your complete day strictly. So I think that yes. When I was working as head of products, I was managing product management in, in three countries and I had... Uh, three uh, product mm-hmm. managers under my uh, control reporting to me and I had to manage all the job and all the projects right. that we were working on and that was kind <laughs> of tricky thing and after that I think I am kind of okay <laughs> with all the workload that I have. I, I really helped for me this uh, David Allen okay. book, Get, Get uh-huh. Things Done, uh, GTD methodology for working with tasks and I started to use OmniFocus for project management that is one quite uh, big combine of of task management and productivity Uh and that really helped me back then and currently currently my workload my project amount is smaller and it's very easy to <laughs> but being manage, honest like so. uh, i am 23 right now okay and i find difficulty in figuring out like what is uh, my day is going to be like like if i if even i plan out for a hour that for hour this is a task but there is some difficulty or no, I, I don't know what that i can't stick to that plan so how can a person like me who is in 20s or maybe who is in 30s like he can plan out things and execute it as well. If you have right. your uh, clear priorities, for example, I'm, I have huge tasks, lists and so on, but I'm writing down up to three, mm-hmm. no more, sometimes less, top three tasks that I should, okay. what I'm planning to do today. And usually I'm starting okay. uh, my day working on those things. And I'm doing most important mm-hmm. thing first and on the morning before oh. I do anything else. Because if I will leave that to the evening, so maybe I will be busy, maybe some, let's say, urgent tasks will take all the right. time and important things will be not done. And yeah, there is Eisenhower matrix, for example, uh, when uh-huh. you prioritize tasks, there are Eisenhower matrix and you can sit, uh, set just a small graph with okay. uh, important things and urgent things. And if you see that this task that you have currently on your hand, uh-huh. it is uh, urgent, but if it is not important, maybe you don't need to do that <laughs> because you still have not so urgent, but important right. task to do. So you have to prioritize all your work and say no to urgent So prioritizing tasks, the task would be much better not... than dividing your day in hours and deciding what do you need to do in this particular hour and that particular hour. I think uh, that prioritizing thing is yes. quite, uh, you know, good uh, in terms of uh, executing as well. Sure, sure. I'm setting, for example, I'm setting priorities what I am planning to achieve in next uh, 12 weeks. I'm setting my goals and those already right. are kind of priorities. Then I'm planning my week and I'm looking what I'm planning to do in every single week. And I'm planning when I do so, so those uh-huh. tasks during the weekdays. I'm above setting when I do video recording, when I do working on my own tasks and so on. Of course, I have mm-hmm. ongoing work, a freelance job and so on. 
but that is kind of uh, right. backbone because I am working on those tasks anyway. I am looking on my priorities. For example, if I see that I have to spend uh, time and record video right. with you, I set that time aside. I plan. I'm planning for that, and and I'm setting that okay. like uh, that day priority. And if mm-hmm. I see that something will stay on the way i am looking on the task is that really more important or someone <laughs> calling to me and yelling to me and therefore it looks okay. important is it really important or is it urgent for someone is it not important for me i will say sorry guys i understand that they are painful okay. for you but i have no time to do that right now i will do that tomorrow or day after tomorrow right. i really like this uh, so, approach to figure out how you can plan out the day like priority thing is quite a good game i think but i would like to come back to the uh, to this question that i asked you before like uh, the career switches that you have uh, you know done so far like if i ask my mother or if i tell my mother that maybe 5 years down the line i would not be doing this work that i'm doing currently like ios development and all those things so her react her first reaction is like i'm worried about you and i just ask her why she says uh, you are distracted so how can you justify this <laughs> interest you know i have i maybe have some other interest after 5 years say right so i may be more interested in doing that thing yes. so how can you justify this argument that you want to do that thing just because you are doing that it's not like if i am doing a ios developer job today mm-hmm. i'll be doing it for next 30 years maybe i'm not interested to do that so is it in distraction or would it call, would you call it a uh, self call that you can take in your life anytime you want uh, well i will say that uh, firstly when you are looking into jobs there is uh, still very big uh, error let's say in career switching just looking into salaries how much money mm-hmm. i can get in the, if i will work in that uh, job and if you are working in the job which you basically do not like or you are bored and especially if you are in your 20s just imagine if you will live i don't know until 80 100 years <laughs> how long you will do that job what you are not enjoy yeah exactly <laughs> let's say so yeah so i think that you how to find something that you are passionate and like to do. But of course, in any job, you will have good days and bad right. days. And in some days, you will like to do your job. And in some days, you will feel like bored. in the very but beginning of any new thing that you do, you find interest in it. You find you find like maybe I'm passionate about it. But after some time, maybe three years or four years, you figure out that if you are really interested in it or not, or was that just your curiosity that you that took you up to that point, right? So you can actually switch. Yes. Like you have this live example of uh, switching between the careers. So I can justify my point based on your choices as well. <laughs> yeah. I think that you have always have to think about reasons, uh, big reasons, big why, let's say so, mm-hmm. why you would like to switch uh, jobs and not maybe just because I am bored from one job, but uh, right. maybe you would like to achieve something. My reason on my last career uh, shift was I, I wanted to mm-hmm. have an uh, option to work remotely. Right work from whatever point I like to. I was interested in all the iOS okay. and Apple uh, stack. And also I was interested in programming mm-hmm. and building things, my own projects and so on. And mm-hmm. I was looking this iOS development and freelancing uh, was okay. my, let's say, outlet and uh, way to do all of that. I think that everyone has to uh, have to think about uh, why you like to do something. And money, <laughs> I will say once right. more, money is very bad, a uh, very bad uh, why reason why to do something. Exactly. That is not great because you can basically earn money today in so many ways. You can, I don't know, start a uh, YouTube channel and uh, <laughs> eat and test right. uh, burgers from different restaurants and make business on that 
there are so many things. Just take a look what young kids are doing on social like there is not just so uh, one conventional can, uh, way to earn money. There are multiple ways. Now we are living in this uh, decade that we can do multiple things to in order to uh, make our living, right? So we can consider those options as well. Yes. Like there is this there is this buzz about uh, yeah, fang companies agreed. all around the world. Like if I talk about India, people are like mad about fang companies. So say if an individual gets selected in one of the fang companies, he start makes video about how to get into it, which is good. You are sharing your knowledge. You are helping others, which is obviously good. But people think that yes. if you have a particular skill, say if I have iOS skill that I have in real as well. So the best possible way to get maximum salary or you can say the work environment out of it is by getting into one of the fang companies right so this is the general belief of people so what would you uh, say about that like is there any alternate as well or is that the only thing that can be done in order to get maximum uh, output out of your skill uh, i do not see that uh, fang mm -hmm. companies are only way to get on that uh, mm -hmm. salary level uh, having using the same skill for example if you are if you are talking about ios developer of course you can go into the fun companies and work there and get uh, quite good salaries different in different countries but still good in uh, comparing with local salaries but uh, if you are building your own apps, no for example cap. and your own businesses then there is no limit for right. revenue at all Sky yeah, there is no any uh, ceiling for revenue. You can, yeah, it can, you go can be unlucky ways. and uh, have zero revenue on your projects, or you can build the uh, next uh, next Instagram. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That is that is question how how you are interested mm -hmm. in building your own business and how you are interested to do that. So from salary perspective, that is not the only way to get good salary. Also, you can, uh, again, you can work as freelancer and right. get better mm -hmm. or the same salary like you are getting in that uh, fun companies. Again, money-wise, I think that that is more, you should choose more uh looking from oh. perspective are okay. you do you like to work in fun companies i personally don't like right. and don't want to work in fun fun companies i'm it takes i'm not effort. saying that i can right. go any day and get the job there that is challenging to get that job there exactly. are different right. testing and so on that's hard therefore those guys are doing good job making videos how to get into those companies mm -hmm. that is not easy but i'm not looking into that i like uh, remote and uh, freelancing work flexibilities and i like that and uh -huh. i can build smaller projects and i can really impact how that application will be built from zero to the app store i can right. let's say i can point to the any app on which I was working and show that this functionality is built my, by me or <laughs> whole application is built by me. If you are working in big fun companies, usually you are working on some small things, moving right. few but buttons around the screen and maybe your work even will not get into the production version and will be will be not approved for release that will be some internal tests which will be not like approved. Uh, in that sense we are not so, trying to make a fun of those guys but yes there are alternate ways as well to make the same amount of money which people think that can be done only through this way right so since we are talking about salary here so uh, what is your finance game be like i would like to know ever's finance game how do you manage your uh, expenses and all those things? And how do you invest your money? So as freelancer, you have to keep in mind that you have to pay your own taxes. You have to buy your own mm -hmm. hardware. You have to take care about vacation days, sick days and so on. <laughs> and let's say budget that and put that into your prices and hourly rates and so on and yeah and also take care about your own education buy all the books on your own all the courses pay all the conference okay. tickets and so on that's that's what i understand as investing uh -huh. back in myself and in my gear what i'm using for work again you need uh, 
good uh, hardware to uh-huh. work fast and effective. And yeah, you can do whatever needed on old and crappy laptop, but then <laughs> you will write on it and <laughs> that is not effective. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's about that's about investing and finances. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I have nothing so... more to add here. <laughs> I do not I do not play I do not play on on bitcoins and so on because I do not understand that I just invest invest money in some pension and funds And as you told me you don't do things which you don't understand No I do not do right. if I will start investing one day then I will first understand what it is and how it works and right. so on I know that investing like in bitcoin myself Bitcoin is again a buzz in the market again right yes. People are again talking about it so even I don't understand crypto so i would not comment about it <laughs> <laughs> right so you have been doing this kpi thing as well like you manage all the things on your spreadsheet what are your future goals maybe for one week or one month i have seen those videos of yours managing things right so what is the main reason behind mm-hmm. that and how you how do you approach towards those goals by putting these things on the spreadsheet uh that's kind of simple planning i set my goals that i would like to achieve in the mm-hmm. next year mm-hmm. 2021 i when you're planning for goals usually you have to pick few if you like to really prioritize them not 10 and 12 or 100 goals but right few three goals in my case it is growth on youtube growth in personal apps and yeah. uh, fitness those are three, let's say, pillars. What I am. You have specifically mentioned your fat percentage and weight over there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. and uh, yeah. Then when I planned what I like to achieve, I just uh, thinking what I should do on weekly, on uh-huh. monthly, weekly, and then daily base to move forward those goals. For YouTube, that is, for example. Uh, to record one video in a week to move forward uh, okay. my goal on YouTube. For fitness, that is, I planned that I will cut uh, on junk food and I will exercise. And for exercise, I specifically wrote down what I will do, kept, kept, um, training with dumbbells mm-hmm. and also running. Yeah, and that, then I uh, following my KPIs. For KPIs, I can track my weight, right. my fat, my for example followers on instagram or subscribers or youtube revenue monthly on my apps and from those kpis i will see uh, is my plan uh-huh. uh, working mm-hmm. is my plan works or not are my numbers growing or <laughs> staying flat right. or yeah what's happening exactly like by the end of the year we think about uh, what we did the whole year that doesn't make much sense right if we can track our whole year in, uh, say, chunks in terms of weeks yeah. or say month, that would be a much better approach. Yes, usually we saw those new year resolutions. Year. That is so that in January you say that I will be I will be fit more in the next year. Then you do some fitness activities in. <laughs> Uh, on yeah. 1st January you go to gym yeah. on 2nd you will be there on 3rd January, yeah, it is gym, <laughs> gym would be empty as you may see in gyms in March it is always empty <laughs> and if you will step right. on the scales right. to measure your weight just once in a year it will be very slow progress but uh-huh. but if you do that at least <laughs> weekly then you can track your progress mm-hmm. And for example, for working on my own right. applications, I also I planned for myself to work um, at least uh, four um, hours per week on my own projects. But for myself, uh-huh. I decided uh-huh. that I have to work uh, four or five times per, per week on, on my own project. And that can be only half an hour. At, at, but at least one time at we uh, uh, one time a day, five time a week in work days, I have okay. to sit. I have to sit on my own projects and do something. I don't know. Check feedback on apps. Uh, start to work on some feature or something like that. And then I can uh, mark that in this day I was working on my project. And that should be at least half an hour. And and that is a quite a, good way to stay aware about what you are doing with the thing that you want to do. 
yeah. in this particular and usually you have and usually and usually you trick yourself into the work in this way that, that, is, right. that is the same with reading you have to agree with you for example that you will read book right every uh, and you are every, you are into every, reading every i know evening. that you are into reading so how does that help you yes. does that help you in your work uh you know ethics as well Yes, I think that yes, yeah, of course, because books are uh, very good <laughs> to get new ideas and new right. perspectives and new things and to see what to do differently, how to change something, how to improve what something. What two books so would you recommend on. to anyone who is listening to this podcast right now to increase his productivity or say work ethics? Uh let's say for uh for for those who are looking in hardcore time, okay. I will say yeah. three books because one is for one I already yeah, mentioned that this uh, GTD gets the things done, but that is quite old book. But if you are very busy and everything falls off your hands and you can't manage anything, mm -hmm. get the thing done uh, is book what you have to read, but uh, a little bit more easy and fresh out in the market book is make it. Make it Make a time. That is for about about the same topic. Make a time is how to make time for important things right. in a day. There are many of recipes what you can apply to your day. Some of those recipes will be kind of uh, <laughs> uh, ob ob oblivious, and everyone knows that. For example. Uh, disable notifications on your phone when you are doing something important and so on. Yeah, but there are quite nice uh, things to mm -hmm. take from mm -hmm. this book and everyone will find something interesting for themselves. If you can find, right. for example, time to work on, on, your own on your own projects, that is book for you. You have to read this. And next or third <laughs> what i suggesting to everyone that is very short and far and easy book to read is uh, share your work show your work share your work, okay, share your work. Sh yeah show i guess it was let me double check i think it's what it was show your work right. because you told me in the last Maybe. conversation about that book right yes uh yes show your work by austin cleon show your work is very, 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 very short book and very intense and with, again, with uh, a lot of examples how you can share your work and, uh, yeah, on right. social networks and so on. That is right. one that I recommend to everyone. And my thing from this book is what I am saying to everyone as well. You, you can share and show your work even mm. if you are a beginner in something. If you just learned something, you can share that and you will help to someone right. who is just one step behind you. You do not need professor degree in some specific area to be allowed to share your knowledge. I've, I was, for example, as well, kind of uh, shy to record some okay. tutorials, programming tutorials or something like that. Because there are so many smart people around why I should try to teach something some are you talking about guy me? with average uh, <laughs> eyes development skills not so no about myself <laughs> my guy my guy with average eyes development skills not not so good english will go and teach someone but when i find that i can solve some challenging problem and i see that right. that can help to someone yeah, I recorded few tutorials and published those on YouTube. And I see that those are exactly. evergreen videos because people are looking for solutions. They are finding those videos and writing also after that, writing in comments that thank you, <laughs> you saved for sharing my day. And I didn't it find really helped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you really helped someone. And uh, guys are write, writing that uh, they, guys and girls are writing that they didn't find solution and, and, and anywhere else and that's really nice feeling that you and even if you help someone. even say even a single person it makes your day right when you get this message that it really yes. helped thanks man and keep it up so i really get this vibe that yeah i would yes. make more videos now so what advice do you have for the 18 year old version of Avers? Yeah. like this is our traditional question that i ask to everyone 
so it's your turn now <laughs> Uh, yes, I, I will say. Yeah, I will say to just to try uh, so many right. things as possible, and uh, and especially if you are in your eighties, twenties, <laughs> you are sorry. I mean, I am I'm forty five. In uh, my twenties, twenties, me was just kid. Even I was thinking that I am adult, okay. but uh, from today's perspective. I was just kid and I was taking life uh, too seriously. And if you are a young guy, you have a lot of opportunities and you can basically, you can do nothing for 10 years and you will lost nothing. You still have many <laughs> years ahead to do all the important things. I would say explore world. If you like travel, go travel. Do not care about what your mom or dad is saying that you have to get corporate job, get right. married and so on. Do what you like to do because you have many years to for exploring the world and find what you are passionate about. If you like to program, okay, go ahead, do programming stuff. If you like travel, go travel, right. do what you like and uh, do not allow society or, or your parents or someone else say what you have to do to go. So many people are going to schools, what parents you like to go. Yes, of course, they have life experience and they, they like to suggest you something good and so on and doing that for the best. But you do you just, uh, but if I ask you, if I ask you to give one advice to the audience that is listening to this podcast, what would be that? One advice. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you can say one last message that you want to give to the audience that is listening to the podcast. Uh, one advice uh, will be keep learning uh, and look around for new things because uh, mm -hmm. life is really fast. Everything is very flexible. Everything changing very fast. And we are far away from the time when you was able to learn one profession, get the job and work until retirement. You will need to uh, learn new things all the time during your life and be I think you also become a boring person beginning. if you continue doing the same job for next 30, say 30 to 35 years. I think it also makes you yes, kind of a boring is, personality. But yes, right? but <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being judgmental here, but I've seen this thing happening. Yes, but that is how our parents was living right. their lives. And that was... It was more of, like more of like uh, sustain sustainability issue with our parents' generation. But uh, if we consider the current generation, we already bond with the sustainability. Now, if we again fight for the sustainability, then what is the difference between earlier generations and ours, right? Yeah. Yes. Sure. So. Yes. Yeah. That is what yeah, I totally feel, agree, and like yeah. I completely agree to the advice and the message that you have given. Like I would definitely, you know, consider that, that advice. I don't know about others who are listening to the podcast, but I would definitely consider this. So on that note, Evers, thank you so much for being on the podcast called The Mayang Show. I really enjoyed the conversation with you. It was so, you know, organic and it was so productive for me as well as a person. Like I'm just amazed by your mindset. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That was pleasure to be on your podcast then yeah. have a great day bye-bye thank you bye <laughs>